Welcome to Rigveda. Today's video is about a build. This build is uh, a powerful 2K gaming rig. Uh, in recent times, uh, gamers have started thinking beyond the traditional Full HD gaming PCs to a much better uh, 2K gaming PCs for that uh, added advantage in the competitive uh, shooters or um, you know nice immersion in the single player titles or a better overall gaming experience. Uh, the falling prices of uh, the monitors also has become, a, uh, you know, has enabled this trend. Uh, at Rigveda, we face uh, three types of customers. The first type of customer is somebody who's a, who's a budget gamer. He's looking for uh, uh, best value for his investment. The second type of customer is somebody who cares more about the performance. He could be a gamer, I mean he would come and tell me that you know I am looking at a certain type of performance, certain amount of FPS in a certain title that he plays regularly or he could be a creator that he wants a certain software suit to run flawlessly in that particular rig. Third type of customer is a customer who values aesthetics more actually. So this kind of customer he wants to showcase he invests on the look of the build, so he wants to showcase this build to his friends, family and you know, his entire community and he also I mean, takes care of his machine properly. So today's build is going to be for one such customer who wants to have a build which is so powerful, at the same time it looks so beautiful. The processor uh, that we chose for today's build is uh, AMD's brand new uh, Ryzen 5 7600X. It is a 6 core uh, 12 threaded processor. It has uh, 32 MB of L3 cache and uh, default TDP is about 105 watt. And uh, the processor has a boost clock of max 5.3 gigahertz and uh, all core should be somewhere about 4.7 to 4.8. For motherboard, our recommendation uh, for this uh, entry level to mid range will be MSI's uh, Pro B650M A Wi-Fi. Uh, this is an all-rounder board. Uh, this comes with uh, you know, the latest Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. Uh, the one thing that we like about this board is uh, it carries the same, uh, you know, that legendary uh, VRM setup from that B6, B550 Pro series as well. So it has eight power stages, which is plenty good. When you, you can even put up to Rise, uh, Ryzen 7, 7700X. We are not going with this particular board. Uh, we have chosen this one, B650M Gaming X uh, AX. Uh, this is also a very competitive board. MSI is slightly expensive. Uh, it was around 21,000 when it was launched in India. Now I believe the prices have been little uh, come down. It's somewhere about 19, 19 to 20,000. So uh, this board is uh, slightly cheaper. So with the Wi-Fi, this is one of the cheapest board available today. This is somewhere about 17,000 uh, and I believe Gigabyte will run some offers in future also. For the RAM, we went with uh, two sticks of 16GB uh, DDR5 and this is uh, from XPG. Uh, this is XPG's uh, Lancer uh, memory. It's an RGB memory. Uh, it is uh, rated at 5200 MHz and uh, the the, the reason why we chose this uh, speed is, uh, see when uh, this platform was uh, introduced, the AM5 platform came, so AMD was struggling with the higher uh, speed uh, kits. For example, it was never running 6000 MHz stable, uh, at a stable speed. So 5600 was the maximum stable speed we used to get. But later days, BIOS updates have made it very strong. And uh, the next uh, part is uh, basically the SSD. Uh, this is a Gen 4 uh, NVMe SSD. Uh, so unfortunately, this motherboard doesn't have a Gen 5 uh, motherboard uh, slot. So Gen 4 is a maximum speed you can get today. Uh, so we went with a S70 Blade, which is one of the most popular, uh, you know, uh, Gen 4 NVMe SSDs available in India today at a very nice uh, price point. So I believe the 1TB is somewhere about 8,000 rupees, and this should be somewhere about 4,500 rupees. So it is a steal at this price and uh, we are also going to have a Vulcan Z uh, 1TB uh, 2.5 inch SSD. Uh, for the graphic card we went with the uh, NVIDIA's uh, GeForce RTX 3070 Ti. 
Uh, it's a gigabyte uh, gaming OC model. It's a overclocked version. It has some RGB, nice cool looking RGB. Uh, coming to 3070 TA, basically it has 6144 CUDA cores and it has 8 GB of GDDR6X type of memory and 256 bit of bus width and this is a improvement from the RTX 3070 which came in 2020. The power supply that we chose for today's build is uh, NGXT C750. It is a 80 plus gold rated power supply with uh, 750 watts and uh, this uh, OEM is basically CWT, one of the you know well known uh, OEM for uh, power supplies and uh, the build quality is really fantastic and it is a completely modular power supply we'll be using some sleeve cables also for today's build and this is gonna make the build look really nice with the NGXT theme so we went with um, you know NGXT's own Kraken Z53 basically this uh, cooler uh, does a very nice job of um, uh, ru running the processor really cool and uh, this I believe this is a 240mm uh, AIO this uh, uh, this should be good enough for up to an 8 core uh, processor and uh, the cool thing about this uh, AIO is it has uh, the LCD uh, display the case we chose today is uh, a you know, very special case uh, it's a newest uh, addition to NGXT lineup it is NGXT's H5 Elite uh, case so uh, their Elite lineup always comes with an inbuilt ARGB controller and the ARGB fans so let me go ahead with the unboxing of this case The first thing that uh, strikes in this case is this uh, front, you know, front also has this uh, complete glass and you got a very nice quality dust filter in the top. So if you look at the I.O. panel, so there is a, you know, a start button and then there is a USB 3.2, USB type A port and as well as there is a type C port as well and there is a headphone jack. And uh, you got a RGB controller here with uh, you know proprietary connectors for the NGXT fans. Uh, you know the lot of uh, provisions given for you to cable manage easily, and the PSU comes here obviously. And uh, so sadly there is no 3.5 uh, drive uh, cage in the bottom like we used to see in the previous generation and uh, you got a uh, tool tools and screws you know that are there there in the additional box that is provided that's it about this case Couple of issues uh, we faced uh, during this build. One is uh, uh, with the RGB fan. So uh, NGXT has introduced this case recently. With this uh, new lineup of cases, what they have done is they have come up with a new standard RGB standard. Now they are calling their uh, fans F120 series. So they are called F20 RGB, and there is another version with uh, you know dual uh, side uh, you know the circle uh, that the the circle that lights up so earlier fans were called aer 120 fans but as you can see these fans are not lit because uh, they use a different standard uh, these aer 120 fans use basically the daisy chaining method uh, the cooler that we have got came up with the aer 120 fans this is probably six months uh, older uh, you know import uh, but whereas um, you know we got one single fan of AR120 we are not able to you know control uh, daisy chain this uh, uh, particular uh, fan with the rest of these uh, fans so you have to be careful when you plan your NGXT builds theme builds so uh, either go for F120 base system or don't mix AR and F120 so you will uh, what we have done is I'll just show you the close up of uh, the fan 
So the H5 Elite comes with uh, you know uh, RGB controller. It has uh, three RGB connectors. So two two are used by the fans in the front. Whereas the AER120 is actually using the RGB from the pump. So it is com controlled from the pump, and uh, the pump is connected to the USB uh, you know connector in the motherboard. See, the second issue issue that we faced is uh, with this uh, you know the uh, mounting the 240 mm uh, AIO on top as you can see the older AER120 fans are pretty thick compared to the newer F120 fans so you may have a little bit of clearance issue if you have a motherboard that has a very beefy VRM heatsink so this could uh, obstruct uh, mounting the uh, AIO on top so you have to plan your build accordingly in such case in in which case what you have to do is you have to mount the radiator in the front but in our case we are not able to do it because we have limited space because the graphic card is quite long i think this is 315 mm uh, it has 330 mm um, length so you know again uh, there is uh, some constraint in terms of uh, top mounting aibo but uh, having said that this case is uh, really in terms of build quality and uh, how unique it looks it is one of the best cases in the market so with this we come to the wrap up uh, we will now uh, do uh, we will continue this video with the gaming benchmarks that we did we have also run the cine bench and other uh, you know popular benchmarks and we have tested the you know temperatures as well so uh, keep watching this video for uh, the benchmark itself well.